On July 18, 1979, Jared Hess was born in Glendale, Arizona. Hess attended Manhattan High School in Kansas for two years before transferring to Preston High School in Idaho, from which he graduated in 1997. Jared attended Brigham Young University's Film School and met Jerusha Elizabeth Demk, who eventually became his wife. Together, Jared and Jerusha co-wrote Napoleon Dynamite. While at BYU, Jared wrote and directed a film entitled Cardboard Only. The film is about a seven-year-old Idaho farm boy who struggles to escape boredom while wearing a cardboard box over his head. He also wrote and directed a short film called Beluka, which became a prototype for Napoleon Dynamite. It featured much of the same cast and plotline, including John Hader as Seth. After graduating from BYU, Hess worked as a cameraman on The Singles Ward, released in 2002, a low-budget Christian comedy. He also worked as a cameraman on The RM, released in 2003, which is a comedy about the experience of a returned missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as well as Pride and Prejudice, a Latter-day comedy, also released in 2003, which is a romantic comedy that is an adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice set in modern-day Provo, Utah. In 2004, Fox Searchlight Pictures, Paramount Pictures, and MTV Films released Napoleon Dynamite, directed by Jared Hess. I got the Napoleon Dynamite DVD because the DVD I ordered, The Big Lebowski, was back-ordered. Thus, I needed a DVD for this week. So, I bought the DVD on Amazon for $5.98, which clearly qualifies as it's less than or equal to $13.91. Girls only want boyfriends who have great skills. You know, like nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. How was school? Worst day of my life? What do you think? <laughs> Idiot. What kind of bike do you have? It's a sledgehammer. Dang, you ever take it off any sweet jumps? What are you drawing? A liger. What's a liger? It's my favorite animal. It's like a lion and a tiger mixed. It's got everything that I desire. Why are you so sweaty? I've been practicing some dance moves. I want candy. I want candy. Is Trisha here? Who's that in my driveway? That's my ride. Napoleon Dynamite, played by John Hader, who is a socially awkward 16-year-old, lives and goes to school in Preston, Idaho. There, he abuses action figures, makes doodles, and is bullied by jocks. Uh, he lives with his grandmother, Carlinda Dynamite, and his older brother, Kip Dynamite, played by Aaron Morell, who spends his time online talking to women, and he and Napoleon attend a free lesson in Rex Kwando, taught by Rex, played by Dietrich Bader. Napoleon is the only male member of the Happy Hands Club, which pantomimes the Rose as school jock Don sniggers in front of the class. Uh, Napoleon's grandmother's injured in a quad bike accident and asks their Uncle Rico, played by John Grease, to look after the boys while she recovers. Rico, a middle-aged man who li lives in a conversion van, treats Napoleon like a child and enlists the help of Kip in selling items door to door. First a set of plastic bowls, then a breast enhancement product. Kip wants money to pay for his internet girlfriend, LaFonda, to travel to Detroit to see him. Rico's coach did not put him in the state championship football game as quarterback in 1982, 
thus altering his life forever. He seeks to raise funds for a time machine advertising the internet, ostensibly to go back in time and get his coach to put him in the state championship game. In the meantime, Napoleon does work for some chicken farmers, but is dissatisfied at the pay. Napoleon befriends two students at his school. Uh, Deb, played by Tina Margarino, who is a shy girl who runs various small businesses to raise money for college, and uh, Pedro, played by Efren Ramirez, who is a transfer student from Mexico. Uh, there's an upcoming school dance. Uh, Pedro asks Summer Wheatley, played by Haley Duff, a popular and snobby girl, to be his dance partner, but she says no. He then asks Deb, who gladly accepts. Pedro encourages Napoleon to find a date for himself, and he picks Trisha, played by Emily Kennard, who is a popular classmate and is also friends with Summer. As a gift, he draws a picture of Trisha that makes her look like Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, and delivers it to Trisha's mother, who is one of Rico's customers. Rico tells embarrassing stories about Napoleon to evoke sympathy for Trisha's mother, who buys his set of bowls and forces Trisha to reluctantly accept Napoleon's invitation. Trisha goes to the dance with Napoleon, but soon abandons him, but Pedro lets Deb dance with him. Uncle Rico buys a time machine on the internet, and Napoleon tries it out, uh, but it, is, it only gives him an electric shock. Uh, Napoleon goes grocery shopping with Uncle Rico, only to be chastised for trying to get the fun pack. Pedro decides to run for class pre president, pitting him against Summer. Uh, Pedro feels hot and shaves his head, he apparently has a fever, but then feels embarrassed, so Deb gives him a wig. Napoleon and Pedro put up flyers and hand out keychains to students who attract voters. To increase their respect by demonstrating skills, Napoleon and Pedro enter a Future Farmers of America competition, grading milk and cow udders. They do well and win medals, but this does little for their popularity. In the meantime, Kip's internet girlfriend, La Fonda, arrives from Detroit and gives him an urban makeover. Uh, Pedro holds an event where the participants smash a pinata resembling Summer. He gets reprimanded by the principal, but is not disqualified from running for president. Uh, Napoleon visits a thrift store and buys an instructional dance videotape called Dequan's Dance Groups. Seeing that he is learning to dance, LaFonda gives Napoleon a mixtape made by her cousin. Rico tries to sell Deb a breast enhancement product, claiming it was Napoleon's suggestion. Deb is angered at this, causing her to break off their friendship. Uh, but Rico's scheme ends after his sales pitch to the wife of Rex, which goes awry. Uh, Rex assaults Rico after unexpectedly arriving during his demonstration of the breast enhancement product. Uh, on election day, Summer gives a speech to the student body and presents a dance skit to Larger Than Life uh, uh, by the Backstreet Boys. Pedro is told that he is also required to perform a skit. Despondent Pedro gives an unimpressive speech. To save Pedro's campaign, Napoleon gives the sound engineer his mixtape and performs an elaborate dance routine to Can't Heat by Jamiroquai. Uh, Napoleon's routine receives a standing ovation from students. Pedro wins the election, becoming the class president. Napoleon sees La Fonda returning to Detroit via bus. Pedro celebrates his election victory with his extended family. Napoleon's grandmother returns home from the hospital, while Rico is reunited with his girlfriend. Deb and Napoleon have made amends, and play tetherball as the credits roll. After the credits, Kip and LaFonda are married in a wedding presided over by one of the chicken farmers. Kip sings a song about meeting his wife on the internet, and the couple rides out on a horse on which Napoleon rode in. Napoleon Dynamite has a storyline. A geek is essentially ridiculed by all those around him until he joins forces with other geeks. And then, essentially, he wins. And a lot of the structure of the movie comes from this uh, storyline. Uh, but what makes the movie memorable are all the memorable scenes. And I can list some of these scenes. Number one, the Rex Kwon scene. 
bow to your sensei. Number two, the happy hands club scene. If you ever hear the rose in a more somber occasion, uh, you are forgiven if you laugh. Number three, the scene where Rico asks someone to tear at the bowl. He fails and looks ashamed. Um, but Kip runs over the bowl with the conversion van and is instantly crushed. And number four, the scene with the chicken farmers. One of the farmers says he forgot his checkbook, so he hopes that there might be a and change. Did he even make an attempt to find his checkbook? Number five, the scene where Napoleon tries it out on Rico's time machine. Kip says that it works, but it clearly doesn't, so he either lied or is stupid. Uh, number six, the dance scene on election day. Number seven, the scene where Napoleon, riding the bus at the school, throws an action figure out of the bus window tied to the string, thus abusing the action figure which is dragged along the road. Uh, number eight, the scene where Napoleon and Pedro put up four for Pedro flyers to the tune of the at and Again, this is by no means an exhaustive list. And if the humor in the movie is stupid and in some ways lame, the smartness in the movie is below the surface. Watching this movie and liking it is an acquired taste. Uh, in some ways, it speaks to a certain life experience about experience in high school. And if you had that experience and can relate to it, then you'll find that you like this movie, which is essentially a comedy. Or maybe you don't like the movie. I think that if, if you identify with the experience of this movie, I think you generally will like the movie. Um, a lot of the appeal of this movie is from the principal character, Napoleon Dynamite, played uh, expertly by John Hader. He is weird, and his soul and manner doesn't win him any friends. But there is something awesome about his refusal to change to accommodate the whims of the in crowd. Uh, does this movie have a moral? Uh, not really, unless the moral is to be yourself, in which case you will win, because no matter what happens, you didn't conform to what's popular. And in this case, uh, the individuals in this movie have happy endings. Uh, but this movie is not really a movie that tries to deliver a message. Uh, but a lot of this movie is about character development, and you can see that. Napoleon is an odd individual, one who refuses to conform to please the crowd. He makes friends with Pedro because he can, and Pedro's self-confidence influences Napoleon, giving him enough confidence to dance in front of the student body, which actually helps Pedro. Um, in the meantime, Kip, his older brother, chats online with babes, uh, I don't know, sexual, sexual words, um, meets his internet girlfriend, LaFonda, and ultimately gets married. Kip undergoes the greatest development of all the characters in this movie. In the meantime, Deb, who at the beginning of the movie is rather shy, overcomes her shyness, and has enough self-confidence to decline Uncle Rico's breast enhancement product. And as I say, like that's a good message because I think that like if uh, you're, like generally girls who uh, need to have like boob jobs kind of have problems. Napoleon Dynamite, while not a classic, is a solid movie with enough memorable moments to make this movie, well, memorable. The casting of Hader as Geek Extraordinaire was part of the genius of Jared Hess. It's not an epic film, but this quirky comedy punches above its weight. I give it a 7 out of 10. The DVD is a two-side DVD with the full screen movie on one side and the widescreen movie on the other side. Apart from the movie, the DVD has a promo for Beiluka, a short film that was a precursor to Napoleon Dynamite, and a trailer for Arrested Development. I'm not really sure if Arrested Development has anything to do with Napoleon Dynamite, uh, but it's on there anyway. It also has a feature commentary for the movie with director Jared Hess, actor uh, John Hader, who plays Napoleon Dynamite, and producer Jeremy Kuhn. You can watch the movie in dubbed Spanish, as well as English, Spanish, and French subtitles. Overall, I was satisfied with the extras, though not particularly impressed. But at least this time there was a commentary, so there's that. In conclusion, Napoleon Dynamite is a good movie, 
um, a not a classic movie, but a quirky comedy. Uh, um, again, it's the new, it uh, was filmed on a budget of uh, four hundred thousand dollars and grossed over forty-four million dollars at the box office. So yes, a quirky comedy that punches above its weight, as I said. Um, and the extras, though not especially appealing, aren't good enough to make this DVD purchase worth it. Again, I only paid uh, five dollars and ninety-eight cents for it, so I think it was worth it. Therefore. I recommend this DVD. That's it for this DVD review. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for next week's DVD review. I may do the Clint Eastwood uh, Blu-ray collection, um, but apart from that, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Like the video and comment on it, and hit the subscribe button to be informed of the latest low-budget review. As always, thanks for watching.